everyone, it's Karen with Yes Please Paper Crafts. So this video is part of the Let's Get Organized YouTube Hop, where each month we focus in on a different item or area in our craft room and we share tips and ideas on organization and storage. So for the month of June, we're doing a full craft room tour, which is super exciting. So y'all be sure and go check out everyone else's videos that is participating in this YouTube Hop, and I'll have links to their videos in the description below. Okay, so I know you guys have been really looking for me to do a craft room tour. I have been promising to do one for a long time. I have to say it's a little bit overwhelming to try to do a craft room tour, to have your room uh, kind of cleaned up in, in a state that you can actually do filming. <laughs> and because I moved last year, um, things really got a lot out of control in my uh, world. And I'm going to share some pictures with you guys so you can kind of understand where what I've been dealing with over the past year. Um, I think it was a little bit traumatic moving. <laughs> I'd always enjoyed moving, packing, just the whole process. I've always loved it. Uh, but this move was just really, uh, it was hard. I think partly because um, I just, when I moved into the house, I wasn't able to get settled in right away because there were some issues with the bath, with the master bathroom. And I wasn't even able to unpack anything or put the furniture in place in my craft room for over a month after I moved into this house. So that was a little bit disappointing. I think I got a little bit overwhelmed with just the amount of stuff that I had. And uh, yeah, <laughs> any of you guys have been through a move, you kind of probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, I want to try to break this video up into different parts and uh, talk a little bit before I get started on the floor plan, talk about the space and uh, the size. And then I will um, also share with you all of the different organization hops we've been, we've been doing and what the future plans are. So before we get into the full room tour, I want to take a few minutes and talk about the Let's Get Organized YouTube Hop. So I started the hop back in April of 2022. And my idea for creating the hop was to be able to have more people that are in the paper crafting community post videos on YouTube on how they organize and store things in their craft room. Because I love watching YouTube videos on organization and it helps me to get ideas for how I can organize and store things in my own room. <laughs> and I, I thought it would be good for my viewers to have uh, different uh, ideas from different people because what might work for one person won't work for someone else. And so uh, the other thing too is that you might pull ideas from different people and create your own system for how you might want to organize something. So I think it's good to have a lot of different viewpoints and ideas from different people. And then the other reason why I created the YouTube Hop was because I was committing myself to create at least one video every month on organization. <laughs> so it's really helped me to get progress on my own organization projects because I have to focus on actually working on those projects every month. And so I think it's been really, really helpful for me as well. And I'm hoping the other participants of this YouTube hop are also benefiting from being able to focus on their organization and get their rooms all organized. And uh, so we have uh, uh, 25 different topics. We skipped the month of December, so we, um, we had a holiday that month. But we've already done 13 different hops. So one of the things that I also wanted to mention was as I'm going through the full room tour, there are a lot of different areas in my craft room where I've already created a video. So for example, I have the very first hop was on scrapbooking collections. So as I'm doing my full room tour, I might point out that I have the scrapbooking collections and they're stored in my calyx, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I already have a video where I shared that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the description of this uh, video, I'm going to put links to all of the other videos. I have a video on scrapbooking collections workspaces, craft carts, enamel dots and bling, thickers and alpha stickers, 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper or paper pads, stencils and templates, small embellishments, die stamps and embossing folders, unfinished projects, my top five organization items, punches, and then the one we did last month, which is inks and more like pens and pencils and markers. So all of those have videos already. And then prior to doing and then prior to starting this YouTube hop back in April of last year, I have been doing organization videos on my YouTube channel since 2019. So I have a lot of organization videos. And if you look back at my playlist, you'll see all of the organization videos that I have. So I just wanted to mention that because I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on some of these areas in my craft room, uh, just because 
I think uh, it would make the video really, really long, and I've already covered that in another video. <laughs> so I hope that this helps to make this video a little bit shorter. <laughs> this video is going to be just, you know, an overall look at my craft room and all the different areas in my craft room. And I also want to talk about floor plans and craft room furniture. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of different things. So hopefully this video won't get too long. <laughs> Okay, so I also wanted to mention that I have a Facebook group for organization where people can share ideas and pictures on their organization and their craft room. So if you want to join that Facebook group, I'll have a link to that group in the description below. And I also will be posting the list of upcoming hops and the topics that we're going to be covering. So for the month of July, we're going to be covering paper embellishments. And so look forward to that in the month of July. So I also wanted to mention that there are parts of my craft room that are very organized, but there are other areas of my craft room that are not organized. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I have lots of unfinished organization projects. So I think that that's okay. You shouldn't beat yourself up over not having your room completely organized because organization is an ongoing process and you're probably never going to finish the project of organization because you're always going to be using your products you'll be bringing in new products into your craft room. And as you use things, they get moved around. So you're gonna be constantly having to put things away and to get things organized. So I think it's okay if your craft room is not perfect and if you're not completely organized. As long as you have a clear workspace and you know where most of your things are, it's better to just enjoy your craft room and not worry too much about having it completely organized. Uh, I think it's good to, to just spend a little bit of time every day or at least once a week doing some organization projects because if you devote some time to it, over time you're going to get more and more organized and uh, that's kind of how I've been uh, doing my organization over the years. So I'm not going to beat myself up over not having my room fully organized or getting my projects completely finished. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy uh, creating in my craft room and hopefully have myself organized enough to know where things are and uh, to be able to find them. Because <laughs> that, to me, is my goal for organizing, is being able to find things when I want to use them. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to post the list of all of the hops, uh, upcoming hops in the uh, Facebook group. And uh, I'll also put it in the description of this video. I also have playlists for all of the previous hops. So if you want to go out there and watch all of those, they're available to everybody for you to watch. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about floor plans. And I'm gonna go over here and open up my floor plan. So I used a app called floorplan, floorplanner.com. And it looks like this. It's a web-based app and uh, it's free. So you can sign up for a free account and it's called floorplanner.com. And I'll put a link to where you can find this in the description below as well. And it's really a cool tool that you can use to help you to figure out you know, where you can place your furniture and what's going to fit. And so um, I'm not used to using this on the iPad. I usually use my computer to use this program, but hopefully I can uh, use this enough to show you guys a little bit of a better view of the organization that I have currently in my craft room. So my house was built back in 2022, and I have uh, also a empty house tour that I, I did a video last year, which is an empty house tour. I'll put a link to where you can find that video in the description below, but I went through my entire house when it was empty and shared the floor plan. Um, but here's my front door. So as we go into the house, here's the front door. Then I have a guest bedroom and guest bathroom over here on the side. Here's the garage. And then we have the kitchen, dining room, living room up here. And then over here off of the dining room kitchen is my craft room. See if I can make this a little bit bigger. And then in the back of the house here, I have the laundry room, the master bathroom, and here is the master bedroom back here in the back of the house. And then there is a patio back there. Okay, so here is my craft room right here. And I have a set of double doors, which is really nice. So I can open that up and be able to look out into the dining room. And then um, I have uh, calyx units across here. I have an L-shaped desk over here. And then I have an island. So this is different than how I was originally planning to design my craft room. 
I went through several different floor plans and it wasn't really working out for me and I ended up having to change the furniture. So I'll put some pictures up here to show you what I originally had. When I first moved into the house, I had a really, really large uh, sit stand desk that I had from when I used to work from home and I wanted to try to reuse that, but it was a really large piece of furniture. And I moved that desk all over this room and couldn't figure out how to make it work. And so I eventually just broke down and said, well, I'm just gonna spend a little money and I'm gonna go buy some furniture that's gonna fit the space that I have. Because one of the things that's really challenging is when you move from one house to another, your shape and size of your room is different. And the furniture that you had in your previous home is probably not gonna work very well for the new home. And I did the best that I could with trying to work with the furniture that I had and just decided uh, to go ahead and, um, and uh, make some purchases. So I spent about, I wanna say it was about $1,100. I purchased two Calyx units and a countertop for the center of the room and made an island. And then I purchased uh, some tables. They're like, uh, I guess they're desk. I have a corner desk and then two uh, 48 inch tables. And that is working out so much better than what I had before. So actually changing the furniture made things so much better in my new space, but it also created a lot of work because I had to take everything out of the room and then move things around and then put it all back. So it was kind of like moving again. <laughs> I'll share some pictures with you guys on, on what my house looked like at this point because it was pretty bad. <laughs> But I'm really enjoying my new space now. I had the, I've had my furniture now for a couple of months and finally getting settled into my craft room. So I'm really excited about um, being able to share my space with you guys, even though it's not completely finished. Um, I'm still in the process of hanging pictures and decorating and putting things away, but it's getting there. I'm making progress. So I'm really happy and excited to be able to be in here and create. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking me about the dimensions of this room and how big it is. So let me go ahead and give you all that information. It's 17 feet long going this way and then 12 and a half feet wide. And I do have an electrical outlet right here, which is one of the reasons why I decided to put in the island. So my previous craft room in my old house was 30 feet long and 11 and a half feet wide. So um, I do have some parts of my craft room that are in my living room <laughs> uh, and actually my dining room. So my, my tables that I used to have in my old house that were in my craft room are now my dining room tables. And the bookshelves that I had, the Billy bookshelves from Ikea, they are in my living room. So I, I did extend my craft room into other areas of my house. <laughs> I am not going to share that with you guys today because we are going to be doing... Um, Another video coming up where we talk about storing items outside of our craft room in the craft room closet. And so I'll go over those areas in that feature video. Okay, so I also have a walk-in closet that's connected to this room and that closet is five feet wide by 13 feet long. And I will give y'all a peek into the closet, but we'll do a full detailed tour of the closet later. <laughs> okay, so that is the floor plan that I have. And if you have any other questions about the floor plan, just leave a comment on this video and I'll try to answer whatever questions y'all might have. Okay, so I know y'all are excited about getting to the full room tour, but I have one more thing that I want to talk about before we get started, and that is zoning. So I am trying to set up zones in my craft room. It's a little bit of a challenge because uh, you can set up a zone, but sometimes things might not fit where you want them to go. And so I, as I'm going through the craft room, I'll try to point out different areas that I have so I have one zone that's a workspace, one place that's a, like a cutting station, and then I have a place where I have all my scrapbooking collections stored. I have a computer station. So I have different places in my craft room where um, I'm trying to keep things together that belong together. So I think that's really good if you can do it. Sometimes it's not always gonna work out that way because you might be limited on space. Uh, but uh, I think it's really good if you can create zones in your craft room. So for instance, having a zone for stamping, having a zone for die cutting, having a zone for, um, you know, just whatever you have that you work on. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't just do paper crafting. You might do other crafting projects as well. Okay, so let's get started with the tour. First, I'm going to give y'all an overall view of the room, and then I will go through things in more detail. And hopefully this video is not going to get too long. <laughs> okay, let's get started. 
Okay, so I'm currently in the dining room looking in towards the craft room. And when I designed my space, I wanted the craft room to be open to the main living area in my house. But I also wanted a way to close it off if it was messy and I didn't want to see it. So I have these double doors. They're eight feet tall and it's a six foot wide opening there. So the craft room in my previous home was much larger and I had these two tables in my craft room. These are the Ingatorp dining tables from Ikea. They're extendable. They have one leaf in them. And then behind that is my Billy bookcases that I used to have in my craft room but are now in my living room. So this is the dining room, living room of my house. And when I have people over for scrapbooking or crafting, we all sit here around these two tables. Okay, so this is the view from my craft room looking into the main part of the house. And you can see here that I have the dining room, living room on this side over here. And then my kitchen is right here. So let's talk about the furniture that I have in my craft room. We're gonna start over here on this side of the room. I have three Calyx units that are two by four. So there's eight cubbies in each unit. These come from Ikea. And this is where I have most of my scrapbooking collection stored. Okay, so next to the Calyx units, I have a four tier cart that I picked up from Amazon. I'll put a link to where you can find all of this furniture if it's available. And I'll put links in the description below. Uh, but this is a four tiered cart. The bottom tier has baskets and then the upper three tiers have shelves. And then uh, next to that cart, I have two Alex drawer units. Those are the wide drawer units that have six drawers, and that also comes from Ikea. Okay, so next to those two Alex drawer units, I have the paper cart from Totally Tiffany. And then in that back corner, I have two Alex drawer units that are the smaller drawer units with five drawers. And then as we move over here and look at this back wall, I have a 48 inch desk that comes from Bush Furniture. It's the Key West design. And I have the gray top with the white on the bottom. They have this in different colors. I'll put a link to where you can find this and uh, you can see all the different colors that they have available. Then I have this corner piece at 60 inches and it's, a, it's an L-shaped corner piece. And then if we swing around this way, I have another 48 inch desk. And that uh, then takes us over to the closet. So this door right here goes into the closet. So let me go ahead and show y'all a sneak peek of the closet here. So here's the closet. On this wall, I have uh, the cabin door. It's supposed to be something that you hang on the back of a door but it was damaged in a move when I moved from Texas to Louisiana. So I just mounted it to the wall. And then that small narrow bookcase is actually the, it's a bookcase from Ikea. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it's spelled G-N-E-D-B-Y and it's a DVD bookcase. Okay, so if I go all the way back to the back of the closet. <laughs> so this is the view from the back of the closet. So I have shelves on either side. I also have a bunch of recollection cubes from Michaels. And there's more shelves over here, more cubes. And then I have a Calyx unit right here at the, this is also a four by two Calyx unit, but I have it turned on its side. And let me go ahead and swing around. I'm trying to, to go slow so I don't make y'all dizzy. <laughs> Here is the view of the closet as you walk in. Okay, so we're gonna do the closet in more detail in a video. Um, I'm not exactly sure what month it is, but I'll put it up here on the screen. It's gonna be coming up. Okay, so then we have here a cart from Michaels. This is the Hudson cart. And then on this wall over here, I have four more Alex drawer units. This is the five drawer units. And then on top of that, I have a Calyx unit turned on its side. And that is also a two by four unit. So in the center of my craft room, I have an island that I created by using two Calyx units. This, this is also another two by four unit, one on either side. And then I have a countertop on top. 
So this is one side of the island. And let me go walk around so you can see the other side. So this is the other side of the island. It's really a lot of storage space. I really love the island. <laughs> and then here we have another cart from Michael's. It's also the Hudson cart. And then this one here is the Razco cart from Ikea. And then I believe the last cart that we have here is this one, which is the We Are Memory Keepers project cart. I also have this tool chest that is underneath one of my tables. And then I have these two paper carts that hold my cardstock. Okay, so I've given you guys an overview of the room and also talked a little bit about the furniture that I have in my craft room. So now let's go back and look at things in a little bit more detail and I'll share with you how I have things stored and organized in my room. So at the doorway right here, I have a cart from We Are Memory Keepers. This is the project cart. It's where I have unfinished projects and things to put away in my craft room and just things that I'm not really sure what to do with. And so it's kind of like just anything that's unfinished or doesn't have a home in my craft room. <laughs> and at the bottom there, I have things that uh, are duplicates or things that I would like to to uh, eliminate from my craft room. I'm, I'm gonna be doing some de-stashing. And so I'm trying to collect things as I go through and organize my space. And so they're going down there at the bottom two trays in that cart. Okay, so right next to that project cart, I have these three Calyx units. And this is where I have my scrapbooking collection stored. I have them organized by manufacturer. So it starts over there with 49 and Market. And I think it ends up down there at the bottom with Vicki Booten. <laughs> and then uh, the bin that I have right here, this white bin, that came from Ikea as well. I will try to list all of the products that I'm sharing with you in the description of this video with links to where you can find them. But in that bin, I have all this loose paper that was all over my craft room. I went back through just recently and organized that and sorted that by manufacturer. And I'm planning to take all of that paper and incorporate it into my collections. And the same with embellishments. I have these bins up here at the top. And my plan is to take all of the flat embellishments like stickers and just anything that's flat. And I'm going to put it in with the collection. Anything that's three-dimensional like washi tape or wood veneer or really thick uh, dimensional um, embellishments, I'm going to keep up here in these bins. So that is the plan going forward. It's just taking me a little bit of time to get there. <laughs> and uh, let's see, um, I'm going to go ahead and share with you this up here. I did this a while back. This is actually the spinders from the Totally Tiffany Scrap Rack. And uh, one of the things that I did was to sort things in by color. So all of this is embellishment sorted by color. And I'm just gonna pull one of these out so I can share it with you guys. And um, this is uh, the Totally Tiffany system. And it's just all kinds of embellishments. This is my red category. So if you've seen pictures or videos of my craft room in the past, you probably know that I had the Totally Tiffany scrap rack. And I still do have the pages and the spinders, but I decided to eliminate the base. And I moved all of that into the closet. So I bought three bins and I created flip bins using my scrap rack spinders. And um, so I'm gonna share that with you. Um, I'll maybe take a quick peek in the closet a little bit later and just show you uh, what I did. And I decided to do that just because the scrap rack was taking up too much surface space in my room. I do love the scrap rack, but I also hate it at the same time. So I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna make it work with uh, using the spinders and the pages and still use that in my organization. I'm just not going to use the metal base. So one of the things that I struggle with with storing my scrapbooking collections and paper in the Calyx is that if you don't have the cubby full of paper, then the paper tends to bend and fold over like you see down here at the bottom. So just recently I found these uh, dividers on Amazon and they are acrylic dividers and there's adhesive on the bottom of the divider. Now they do a pretty good job of keeping things upright, but if there's a lot of weight, then it will um, kind of shift a little bit but it does still give support even though it's leaning a little bit. <laughs> I do wish it would stay upright, but for the most part, you can see that most of these shelf dividers 
Uh, they do a pretty good job of keeping things vertical, which is what my what I wanted to do. And so um, it works out pretty good. So I'm, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So I have a few that I haven't put into my calyx yet. And it's just a clear acrylic piece. And then I put the adhesive down there on the bottom. It's a double-sided adhesive. So I haven't stuck these down to the... I'm going to put them down here at, these, at the bottom cubbies. And I haven't done that yet. But I will put links to where you can find these acrylic shelf dividers on Amazon in the description of this video. Okay, so on top of my calyx unit, I have a, a bunch of different pictures and some decorative scissors. And uh, I haven't really decorated the room yet. I'm still in the process of moving into the house. And I haven't really even hung pictures on the wall yet. Uh, this is a picture of my dog, Bella, that I still haven't finished. But I did paint that picture. It's still in the unfinished process, though. And I haven't started the picture of Lily Bell. But I'm planning to uh, do a picture for each one of them and hang it in the room. And then next to the Calyx units, I have this cart, and this is the Atlantic Modular Storage Cart from Amazon. They have this with four shelves, which you see here. They also have it with three shelves, and I have one of those in my dining room. And then the, one of the first pictures I hung up on the wall was this picture here. Um, this was something that was gifted to me in Happy Mail by my friend Rosalie over at Can't Wait to Plan. And uh, she made this for me. It's gorgeous. It's a three-dimensional scrapbooking layout. <laughs> so currently on the cart, I have my sewing machine. I used to have this stored in another room in my old house. And I wanted to move it into my craft room just so I'd be able to use it more. I like to do sewing on my scrapbook layouts. And I have a card here from my friend, Joanne Bartell. She recently sent me some Happy Mail. And uh, so I have her card displayed. She sent me a lot of different mini albums and cards and I want to have a space in my room to display them but so far I'm still working on trying to figure out where things are going so I haven't really put out a lot of decorative things yet and then down here I have the We Are Memory Keepers Evolution die cutting machine and this is kind of like my cutting station I also have my Cricut down here and then at the bottom I have a little mini uh, die cutting machine and then here are some plates not really sure what I'm going to put in these baskets yet. I haven't really figured that out yet. <laughs> One of the reasons why I have the cart though is because I have my Cricut here and when I'm using the Cricut I can pull this cart out so that when the mat moves back and forth I can uh, you know have space for the mat and uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I chose to get a cart as opposed to just getting a piece of furniture like a bookshelf. Because this is on wheels you know it can be easily moved around. Okay, so next to the cart, I have these two Alex drawer units, and I have been moving stuff around quite a bit, so I'm not exactly even sure what I have in there. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and take a look. I'm going to open up the drawers and show you all what I have. I do know that the uh, Calyx unit that's further away is the one where I have all my washi tape stored. <laughs> so uh, I have a ton of washi tape. <laughs> uh, but up here, this is a, uh, a totally Tiffany, I think it's a stadium for, uh, I can't remember, it's like a stamp and die storage stadium, but I'm using it to store some um, of my projects. So this was a project that I started working on a while back where I'm creating base pages using a paper pad and I finally found these base pages so I can, I'm going to be able to finish this project finally. And then I have some embellishments that I made here to go with that. So this is something that I'm working on that's going to be in an upcoming video. So I have it here where it's... Um, where I can easily find it. <laughs> and then next to that, I have these washi storage drawers. These come from Michael's. It's the tidy storage and it's a three drawer organizer. It's meant to be for washi tape. So you can see here that I have washi tape. These are my simple stories washi tapes. And then uh, I'm planning to use uh, some of these to store flare buttons. And so I have some of my flare buttons stored in one of these units as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's in these IKEA drawer units. So in this top drawer, I have my Cricut mat <laughs> and some drawer organizers. So not a whole lot there. I'm planning to put my Cricut pens and other uh, tools that I use with my Cricut in this drawer. And uh, that's, uh, I can't remember actually where I even put that. So I'm going to need to find it so that it could go here in this drawer. And then the next drawer down, I have some... 
painting supplies. I have some mats that I use if I'm getting messy with projects. I have some wax paper. Uh, there's some cleaning tools for stamping. A brayer. <laughs> So these drawers really are not that organized. Um, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out where I'm gonna put things. Here's some of my mixed media products. So I have like some distressed glitter, some glitter paste and uh, different things like that. I'm planning to put mixed media products in this Alex unit. Okay, so in the next drawer, I have some Nubo embellishment mousse and then the uh, rest of this drawer is empty. And then uh, this one here, I have a bunch of painting and art supplies. And all of this still needs to be organized. I have another place in my craft room where I have uh, acrylic paint, oil paint, watercolor. And I haven't decided yet whether I want to put all this stuff over on that side of the room or if I want to put it here in this Alex drawer unit. So um, <laughs> that's uh, something I still need to figure out. And then in the bottom... I just had some miscellaneous mixed media products over there. So this unit's pretty empty. One of the things I thought was funny was as I was going through and organizing my craft room and moving furniture around and turning, changing the furniture out, I started going through and pulling things out of the room and going through them. And I realized that a lot of the drawers that I had in my room were empty <laughs> because I had never really even put stuff in there after I moved. <laughs> Okay, so this next unit is dedicated to washi tape, and I think I have four drawers of washi tape. <laughs> so I'm obsessed with washi tape. I think I love washi tape as much as I love paper. And uh, so I have washi tape here by color. And then the next drawer down, we have um, washi tape that's black and white and neutral colors and gold metallics down in the second drawer. And then the third drawer, we have patterns like stripes and chevron and florals and just different uh, categories like that. And then the last drawer here, I have even more <laughs> washi tape. <laughs> and you know what's really funny about having all of this washi tape? Because I have these four drawers of washi tape plus the washi tape up here. Is that sometimes when I'm working on a project and I'm looking for washi tape, I can't find one to match my project. Can y'all believe that? <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> Okay, and then the next uh, drawer down, we have some chipboard, and I have just miscellaneous things. <laughs> but um, this is a chipboard that I've had for a long time, and I just forget about it. So I want to try to figure out uh, some way to be able to know what I have and, and be able to use some of this. And I have a different place where I store all of my alphas, so I might actually move this chipboard alphas in with that uh, stuff so that I kind of have that... Um, so when I'm looking for alpha, I'll remember that I have this because right now I, I sometimes don't even think about it because it's in the drawer with the chipboard. Okay, and then the bottom drawer here, I have my doilies and some border strips and uh, just uh, some uh, metallic foil paper and things like that. So that is everything that I have stored currently in these two Alex drawer units. So next to the two Alex drawer units, we have this cart from Totally Tiffany. This is the paper cart. And then I have this accessory on the side. I used to keep my paper trimmer over here, but uh, this was closer to my workspace in my old craft room. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put in here yet. Uh, for right now, it's empty, but it's really awesome for really tall items. And this was something that uh, is actually from We Are Memory Keepers from their cart system. And then in this cart, I just have a whole bunch of um, 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper that I use for backgrounds. So I have white paper, cream paper, some colored cardstock. And then I have some um, things here that I use for organizing. And then this is the scrap and easel, which I haven't used for a while. Because when I film videos with YouTube, I don't really use that. But if I'm just scrapbooking for myself, I like using the scrap and easel because it has magnets and it just makes it a little bit easier to lay your page out. <laughs> and uh, down, that, down here at the bottom, I just have more uh, paper. So this is really disorganized after my move, and I haven't really had a chance to go back through here and to organize this better. But right now, it's just holding a whole bunch of cardstock and then also some organization uh, things that I use when I'm organizing in my craft room. Okay, so opposite of where these drawer units are, I have the island. And this is a two by four Calyx unit. And I have a bunch of my clear stamps here as well as some 
cutting platforms and then some stamping platforms. Uh, but in this first cubby, I have my larger stamps. And uh, these are stored in some pockets that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. This is meant to go into a binder, but um, I just uh, use it like this and put it into this bin. And these are the Paper Studio pockets. It's for the stamp storage that's in those black binders. And I'll put that right there. And I, I'm using that because they're a little bit bigger than the other pockets that I have. And so right next to uh, that cubby, there's this one here and I have a double fridge bin. And in this fridge bin are the stamps that I have that are in these pockets, which are about a five by seven. And uh, I'll have links to where you can find all of this different storage in the description below. Uh, but I have uh, three cubbies with uh, those double fridge bins. So in addition to the stamps that I have here, I also have some stamps in my closet. I have some stamps from Close to My Heart, also from Stampin' Up, and then also my woodblock stamps are stored in the closet because I don't have space here in the island to store all of those. And my plan is to do a reference guide, probably using my iPad and having a digital record of all of the different stamps that I have. And uh, I think it's easy to keep the Close to My Heart and Stampin' Up stamps in the closet because they're all numbered and it would be very easy to go in there and find them because uh, I have them sorted by the item or product number. So that's one of my unfinished projects is to go through and organize all of my stamps and get a reference guide going so that I know what I have and uh, can find it easily. And I used to have some dividers in here when I moved uh, the dividers, uh, I don't know what happened to them, but I'm just going to have to find them again. I have these in categories. Uh, like alphabet was one category and pets was another category. So I'll have to go back through and sort these and put them back into order. Um, so right now I really don't know what I have here. <laughs> it's a little bit challenging for me to find stamps because I have to just flip through them until I find what I'm looking for. And so I haven't really been using my stamps much because uh, they're just in such a mess right now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at what I have in the drawers down here. So. I don't really know what's in here. I've been moving stuff around my craft room, but I think what I was planning to do is to put different tools in these drawers. So in this top drawer, I have my melting pot. This is from Ranger, and you can use a heavy embossing powder and emboss things. It's really super cool. And then I have a Stampin' Up! stamping wheel tool with the guides. I do have a bunch of the stamping wheels, and those are stored in my closet. Unfortunately, you can't put everything uh, in, you know, close by where you're working because, you know, I just don't have the space to do that. So it's nice to have the closet uh, available to be able to store some things that I don't use as frequently. Okay, so I also have this large stapler. And then we have uh, some staples, a little attacher tool, a jewel tool, just different types of tools there. Okay, the next drawer that we have here is empty. <laughs> so I don't have anything in that drawer. And then the one below that has glue guns and a little mini iron and, and a, a heat tool. So I have that kind of stuff in this drawer. And then uh, we scoot down to this last drawer here. Uh, this one I have looks like some miscellaneous pocket cards and then also some photos. I'm not exactly sure why that's in there, but um, I'm going to have to probably take that out and put it where it should, should go. Uh, I also have the hand crank for my We Are Memory Keepers Evolution Machine and also the power cord for that. And then in the last drawer here, I have different accessories for my sewing machine and the power cords for my sewing machines that I have in my room. Okay, and then the last cubby that I have down here, I don't really have anything stored in here, but I did purchase four of these drawer units from Michaels. You can purchase it as uh, like in a bundle online. So I bought four of these, and these are the drawers that fit 12 by 12 paper. So they fit really well into the Calyx unit, but uh, they're just a little bit too tall to fit two of them together. Now, I was able to manage to get two of those into the one of the cubbies on the other side of this island. It was quite a challenge. I struggled quite a bit, <laughs> but I wasn't able to stack the other two that I have. So I just have one set over here and then the other set of drawers is on the other side. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna put in here yet, but the reason why I went ahead and got four of them was just because the price was so good 
uh, being able to buy that as a bundle. Um, these are really expensive <laughs> if you buy just one and you don't get it on sale. <laughs> okay, so I definitely would recommend buying these, but just um, get it when it's when it's on sale for 30 or 40% off, and then it's really worth worth the price. Okay, so along the back wall of my craft room, in this corner over here, I have my printing station, and I have the Canon TS9521C printer. It's a crafting printer that prints 12 by 12 borderless prints, and so you can create your own scrapbooking paper. So it's really awesome, and I love that printer so much. I also love that it's white, so it blends in better with my room. <laughs> okay, so in the drawers of, this, of these two Alex drawers that are right underneath the printer, I have printing supplies. So in this drawer, I have all of my ink cartridges. And then in the next drawer, I have cardstock here, some eight and a half by 11 printer photo paper. And then back here, I have just plain printer paper. Okay. And then on this side, I have some thicker uh, cardstock. And then in this drawer, I just have some miscellaneous uh, rub-ons and uh, some stickers. <laughs> so, I'm still in the process of organizing and moving stuff around, so <laughs> not exactly sure why I put that in that drawer. Okay, so in the rest of these drawers are all of my thickers. So here is the thickers, and um, they're organized by color. So here we have all of the pink and then red, and it, so it's all organized by color. I also have a drawer with just uh, metallics like silver and gold, but all six of these drawers have thickers. So a while back, I did create a video, which I posted on my YouTube channel, where I shared all kinds of different ways to store thickers and alphas. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll have a link to that video in the description below. Okay, so next to this Alex drawer units, I have this uh, desk. And under the desk, I have these two rolling carts. And this is where I have all of my cardstock stored by color. And so I also have a video where I shared rolling paper storage. Uh, so that uh, more on this organization is in that uh, paper storage video. Okay, so on top of this desk, I have another one of those uh, stadiums for stamp and die storage. And in this one, I have a project that I'm working on where I wanted to share how you can uh, use your printer to create scrapbooking paper and also ephemera. And so uh, all of this paper that you see here that I have in the front here, I actually printed on that printer. And isn't that amazing? That's, that's paper that I printed myself. <laughs> so you can buy the digital collections from places like Snap Click Supply, which is Echo Park and Carter Bella, or the AC Digitals, which has the Maggie Homes and uh, different, uh, I think Jen Hadfield, Pebbles, Crepe Paper, and those manufacturers. So you can buy the digital collections and then print them out using uh, the printer like that. So super amazing. And I'm working on a video that I wanna share that with you guys. So one of these days <laughs> I'm gonna get that video done. But that's why that's here is because I just wanted to have that accessible and be able to see it so that when I go to do the video, I'll have that um, available so that I can create that video for you guys. So next to that, I have some acrylic drawer units and these all came from Amazon. Uh, this is a three drawer unit. It's white on the side. They have different colors that you can buy and then the front of the drawer is clear. And in this set of drawers, I have embellishments by type. So I have things like flowers, bows, butterflies. So just anything in my craft room that was glue sets a butterfly goes in here. Um, so just different categories that I have. Here's some flowers and then here are bows. So this is all of my embellishments by category. Okay, next to that, I have ephemera by color, and these are the Deflecto two drawer units, and I think I have six of those there. They're stacked up, so 12 drawers in total, and in there I have a drawer for every color. So here I have pink and then, uh, red, yellow, orange and yellow, <laughs> blue, turquoise and teal and aqua, and then we have green and purple. And then we have neutrals like whites, and then uh, here is browns, and then metallics, and then this is just random miscellaneous uh, multicolored embellishments. <laughs> okay, next to that, I have some colored pencils and crayons. 
Okay, so in this corner I have an L-shaped desk and I have my computer workstation set up here. It's really nice to have a computer in the room because I can use it to print out photos, also to print out digital paper and embellishments, and then use it to create things with my Cricut. Okay, and then over on this side I have all of my pens and markers. I have Copet markers in these two buckets up here. And then I have this storage down here. These are uh, some cube storage that I got from Michael's a long time ago that's probably discontinued now. Uh, but I had all of my pens and markers stored here. And what I was finding uh, was that some of my markers were really hard to get to because they were shorter. And what I decided to do was to change up the storage a little bit. So I'm in the process of reorganizing this. And we just did a video back in May, the May Hop for the Let's Get Organized Hop. We organized our ink pads and our pens and markers and things like that. So I did share what I had previously. And what I've added to that organization are these acrylic drawers. I picked these acrylic drawers up on Amazon. And they're really cool because you can just pull the whole drawer out and bring it over to your workstation. And the only downside to it is it doesn't fit some of the longer markers. So markers like this from Stampin' Up! And then the Distress Markers. These markers are too long to fit into those drawers. <laughs> so I'm probably going to end up keeping some of this storage here. And then also have uh, these drawers. And one of the things that's really... Uh, this storage works okay actually for the longer markers because you can easily pull them in and out. What I was finding with the shorter markers was that uh, it was really hard to get them out of these cubbies. I'm going to show y'all. Because if I put the marker in there, it's really far in. And you can't see it. It's really hard to dig them out. So I think for shorter pens and markers, it works better to have them in little drawers. So I have all of these drawers. Eventually I'm going to put labels on there. Uh, but I have distress crayons and then just different... These are alcohol markers. I have some water brush pens here, uh, some Bic markers, so just all kinds of different markers. And then here I have some gelatos. So you can store other things in these drawers other than just pens and markers. And I've actually been playing around with different items in my craft room, trying to figure out what would fit in here and what I could use that for. Because <laughs> I have another set of these and I haven't decided whether I'm gonna keep it or not. Uh, but that's what I have so far. I was planning to put all of these markers into the drawer units and then I found out that they don't fit. So. <laughs> but um, I also was playing around with taking out some of the dividers here. And so for this unit right here, I did take out some of the dividers and I thought about using this for ink pad storage. Uh, so possibly I might do that. But for now, um, this is the state it's in right now. And it's one of my un many unfinished organization projects. <laughs> Okay, so underneath this desk, I have a tool chest. This came from a home goods store, and I just love the color, so <laughs> I went ahead and picked that up. It's like one of those metal chests that you store in your garage and you put your tools in it. And on top of that, I have a paper trimmer, really large paper trimmer. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the drawers and show you what I have in here, but I just have miscellaneous things that I wanna keep close by to where I'm working. Things like uh, erasers, pencil sharpener, uh, just different tools and items here. And then the next drawer down, we have some foam tape and some double-sided tape. And then my Creative Memories photo trimmer. And then if we go down another drawer, I have some rulers, my ATG gun, a stapler, hole punch, you know, we are memory keepers, layering guides, just various tools. Okay, the next drawer down, I have some foam tape. And then also vellum that's underneath here. And I have some cardstock, uh, two different sizes. So I have this cardstock here and then this here. I use this just on when I'm stamping a sentiment or maybe matting a small picture. I can grab the cardstock out of this drawer. Next drawer down is kind of empty. I have some organization things down here. I'm still in the process of moving stuff around. Um, so I had some other stuff in here and I'm, I've already moved it. So I'm kind of playing around with where I want to store this. But I just have some uh, CD, DVD sleeves that I use when I'm organizing. And then down here at the bottom, I have the larger record sleeves that I use for my scrapbooking collections down here at the bottom. And then next to this chest, I have this uh, bin that came with one of my recollections cubes from Michael's. And I just uh, stacked all of 
the different uh, bigger tools that don't fit anywhere. So like paper trimmers. I have some uh, thicker alignment guides. My uh, 13 by 13 cutting mat. Here's a scoring board and then uh, like a glass mat. So just various things that don't fit anywhere else in my craft room. I have them stacked there um, and tucked underneath the desk. So this last desk that I have here is actually my workspace where I do most of my projects and where I film my videos. I have my video filming equipment up here and my lighting. And I have the TV mounted on the wall here. So as I am working on a video, I can actually see what it is that I'm actually recording. <laughs> and then uh, on top of this table or this desk, I have this 360 degree rotating storage that came from scrapbook.com. And then next to that, I have some acrylic drawers where I keep enamel dots by color. And so these enamel drawers, I did pick these up from Amazon and it's just enamel dots by color. And then on top of that, I have these crystals from Pink Press Studio. And then there's this smaller drawer unit that my friend Joanne Bartell gifted to me in some recent Happy Mail. And I haven't put anything in here yet, but I'm planning to fill it up with some charms and just different embellishments. And it's really cool because it's, uh, the, it's three drawers, but they have dividers in there. And so that's super cool. So I can't wait to see what will fit into that little drawer unit there. <laughs> so thank you, Joanne, for sending that to me. It's super awesome. And so next to my enamel dot storage, I have some paper towels and also some magnets that go with my glass board. So this is a glass mat from Glassboard Studio. It's 36 inches wide by 24 inches deep. And I did get the metal plate on the back of it so that I can use the magnets. So it's really amazing. I have a coupon code for 20% off if you want to uh, make a purchase there at glassboardstudio.com because I am an affiliate. And uh, so I'll put that up here on the screen. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing that I have over here is paper towels and then my blending brushes. So I have all of my blending brushes, the larger and smaller ones, stored in this little bucket. And that's pretty much my workstation here. So at the back of my room, across from where these desks are, I have an Alex drawer unit that is right against the island. And uh, this drawer unit has all of my embellishments. So I, I put this as close as I could to my workspace. So when I'm working on a scrapbooking project and I want to add some embellishments, I can just quickly go over to this drawer. And in the drawer, I just have uh, paper clips and all kind of miscellaneous embellishments here. And then the next drawer down, we have more embellishments. And this is pretty disorganized right now. Eventually, I'm going to do some work on this and organize this. Uh, but for now, it's pretty much a mess. <laughs> okay, so this drawer I have organized already. This is my wood veneer. I have a video where I shared how I store and organize my wood veneer. And so if you're interested more in seeing more about this storage, uh, check out that video. Okay, the next drawer down, we have uh, the bling. I have a video where I shared how I store and organize my bling. So be sure and check that one out if you want more information about how I organize this drawer. This is one of my most favorite drawers in my craft room. It makes me happy when I open this drawer up. <laughs> so pretty, all of the bling bling that's in here. <laughs> so that's a super cool drawer. And the next one down, we have uh, more embellishments. This is more three-dimensional embellishments, charms flowers, all just different kinds of things. And then on the bottom here, I think I moved some things around and now what I have stored here is just some crepe paper and tool. And uh, I think I originally had my dually stored here and I moved them. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still in the process of organizing my embellishments. And uh, so this is gonna be my storage for that in my craft room because it's pretty close to where I work on my projects. Okay, on the top of this Alex drawer unit, I have the Anna Griffin Empress die cutting machine and then also a label maker. And one of my goals this year is to get everything labeled. <laughs> right now, practically nothing in my craft room has a label on it. So once I've figured out a home for all of the things in my craft room, I'm planning to put labels on all of the drawers and bins and uh, everything here so that I kind of have a better idea of where everything is stored in my craft room. But for now, uh, I took all the labels off. So it used to be I had labels on these Alex drawer units, 
And I took all of the labels off because I'm moving things around and what the labels had on there was not uh, right anymore. And so I'm just going to redo all the labeling at one time. And this uh, label maker, I just purchased it recently because my old lab label maker that I had for like 15 plus years finally broke. And so I went ahead and purchased this Brother label maker and you can connect it to your computer. And so I can type up stuff on the computer and then print out the labels and that'll be a lot quicker than manually typing them onto the keyboard. So that's going to be really awesome once I get to the point where I'm going to be creating all of the labels. Okay, so up next is the other side of my island. And I, here I wanted to put things that I would use as I'm working on a project. And so I have my stamping platforms. I have the crop a doll to punch holes. And I have the cutting plates for my Anna Griffin Empress machine. And then in this drawer, I have embossing tools, stamping tools, um, you know, embossing ink and like powder tools and things like that. And then the next drawer, I have more stamping tools and embossing tools. I have my heat gun and a brayer and uh, stamping blocks and just different things like that. Okay, and then uh, these two cubbies, I did go ahead and splurge on the Organize and More ink pad storage, and it's really awesome. <laughs> so I love this storage, and I did uh, put all of my Distress Oxide inks here. So this is going to be really awesome when I'm working on projects, is I can quickly just reach for one of these ink pads. And uh, so I really love this so much, but it was quite pricey. <laughs> okay, underneath here is a nine compartment cubby wine storage that came from Ikea. And these little bins uh, from the Dollar Tree, these are the room essential or fridge bins that come from the Dollar Tree. They fit perfectly into these little cubbies. So I have all of my ink refills, my alcohol inks, and uh, some various tools all stored in these little cubbies here. Okay, so below this ink pad storage, I have some more inks and just various uh, mixed media products. And these are the Slim Project Cases. I have a whole bunch of the mini ink cubes. And uh, I have four of those stacked on top of one of these uh, drawer units from Michaels. This is the large drawer unit from Michaels, the acrylic drawers. I have some shimmer paints in that one. And then we have more shimmer paints here. And then the, the bottom drawer here, I have some acrylic paint from, uh, this is the Dilutions acrylic paint. Okay, and then the last cubbies over here, I have all of my stencils and templates, cutting templates from Creative Memories. So uh, this is all stencils, recipe templates, and different things like that. Things that I would reach for as I'm working on a project. And then down here are two more of these acrylic drawer units that I have stacked one on top of the other. I actually managed to get both of these into one cubby. <laughs> it was quite a challenge, but I did actually manage to get those in there. And uh, so right now, I just, in this top drawer, I have some uh, Bramble Fox that my friend Joanne Bartell just recently gifted to me in Happy Mail. And I just have that stored right here on top. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put in here yet. These are both empty, the next two drawers. And then in the drawers down here, I have some wax, uh, metallic wax. And then uh, this drawer is empty. And then the one at the bottom, I have these perfect pearls and um, pigment powders. Okay, so in front of the island, I have two carts stored. I would really love to put that Razcog cart with my tools next to my workspace, uh, but it's just a little bit too big to fit there. And let me go ahead and swing over here so you can kind of see. So this is my workspace. I have a little bit of a space there, but the door gets in the way, so I can't open and close the door if I put my Razcog cart there. So I have thought about taking the door off of the closet because then I could store that cart there. <laughs> So I might do that at some point in the future, but for now, it's just gonna hang out over here in the middle of the room. So this cart here has all of my metal dies. And so this is kind of my cutting station that I have here. So I have all of my cutting machines over there. And then my Empress machine is on the other side of the island. And then all of the dies are stored here in this cart. So I have some larger magnet sheets that are eight and a half by 11 up here. 
And then down here, this store is, these are about a five by seven card that I have uh, my die stored on. So we did do a hop for stamp and die storage. So I talk a little bit more about this storage in that video. So if you wanna see more on how I store and organize my stamps and dies, go check that video out. And then this Raz cart cart is my tool cart. This is where I have all of my frequently used tools and different items that I use in my craft room when I'm working on a project. And so I can roll this around to my work table or anywhere else in my house when I'm working on stuff. Sometimes I like to sit in my dining room if my craft room is messy, I can just go work in my dining room and work on a project. I can roll this cart over there into the dining room. And then in the back of this cart at the bottom is where I have stored all of my reference guides that I have. I have my guides for my paper pads, for embossing folders, and for punches. And I have uh, different videos where I shared how I actually created all of these reference guides. So if you're interested in seeing that, please be sure and go check out those videos. But this is my reference guide on my punches, which is one of my favorite things in my craft room right now. <laughs> I'm really enjoying having that reference guide to use when I want to use punches for my projects. Okay, so over on this side of the room, I do have one more cart over here. This is the Hudson cart from Michaels. And this is where I have stored all kinds of embellishments. I have my sticker books some three-dimensional embellishments, enamel dots, some chipboard, and I had some bows over here that are supposed to be here, but I don't know what I did with them because they're gone. <laughs> I'm going to have to find those, but I had a whole bunch of different bows, and I just have different embellishments by category. Here I have puffy stickers. Here I have stars and hearts and uh, different things like that, some tassels. So just different types of embellishments by type. And down here I have tags. And this cart's kind of a mess too since I've moved. And uh, I did do a video on this cart at one point. So I'll have to see if I can find that video and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, but uh, after I moved, things kind of got jumbled around. <laughs> but uh, at some point I'll get this reorganized. Okay, so this last area of my craft room is this Calyx unit that's sitting on top of four of the Alex drawer units. And let's go ahead and get started by looking at what I have in these drawers. So this first set of drawers is all punches. So I have punches here. These are smaller punches. And then the next drawer, I have corner punches and border punches. And then in this one, we have some corner punches. This is the uh, fun Stamper Joni punch system and then some more punches there and then here I have a whole bunch of different border stamps or border punches I should say not stamps <laughs> and then the last drawer I have the bigger punches okay so I have punches stored in multiple places in my craft room so another place that I have punches stored are in the cubbies up here, which I will go through in just a minute. I also have punches stored in my closet. Uh, so um, I just have them in different various places in my craft room. I also have some in my uh, tool cart. <laughs> I think it's okay to store things in different places in your craft room and not all together. As long as you know where it is and you can find it. I think it's okay to um, put things in uh, different areas in your craft room and not necessarily keep it all in one place. Sometimes you just don't have the space to keep it all in one place. <laughs> okay, so this next set of drawers, I have uh, my, uh, this is a laser square tool from We Are Memory Keepers and just some other uh, things here. We have some more cutting tools and blade refills. And then here is where I have some of my art supplies. Uh, here's some pastels and some chalk. Um, I haven't decided yet where I'm going to put all of the different painting supplies that I have. Uh, this is all oil painting supplies. And then at the bottom here is acrylic paints. So um, right now I'm moving this around trying to figure out the best place to actually put it. But for now it's residing in these Alex drawers. And then this drawer here just has some miscellaneous stuff in it, uh, some project cards and things like that. <laughs> and then this one has uh, a couple of old paper trimmers. And then these three drawers down here are all empty. So I haven't decided what I'm actually going to store in this particular Alex drawer unit yet. 
And the last organ I have here is my old dies. These are all my old Sizzik dies that I have not been able to let go of yet. <laughs> and uh, so I have all of these dies here. Um, here are a bunch of uh, embossing dies. And then these are a bunch of embossing plates and uh, di different uh, embossing folders. Uh, the next drawer down, we have some larger dies. And then here are more <laughs> larger dies. And then at the bottom, we have some larger dies down here as well. So I've been scrapbooking and doing crafting and card making for probably close to 30 years, if not longer. So I've accumulated quite a lot of things in my room <laughs> and uh, these I've had for a really, really long time. I just hate to get rid of them. I did actually let go of my old Sizzix machine that I had for many years, uh, but uh, I still like having the dies available. Okay, so up here in this Calyx unit, I have uh, some cardstock that goes to Cartabella and Echo Park collections that I picked up from Tuesday mornings on clearance. <laughs> I need to put that with my Echo Park collections. And then here I have just some miscellaneous paper. And also down here, this is miscellaneous paper. I need to go through this paper and try to decide if I'm going to organize it by collection or by color or by pattern or some other thing. And then uh, this is all Creative Memories collections. And then up here I have embellishments. I think this is Creative Memories embellishments. And these are more 6x12 stickers and chipboard that I need to go through and put with the collections. These uh, little uh, cases right here came from 31 bags. And uh, it's a project tote. And they fit perfectly. You can fit two of these into a Calyx unit. Okay, so next to that I have Works in Progress, also page kits. And uh, this bin right here is a flip bin that I can flip through. And I have all kinds of different page kits and different various projects that I never finished. <laughs> so those are still things to be done. Okay, and then up here I have my punches. So I have uh, two cubbies with punches. And these bins came from Target. This is part of the Room Essentials Why Weave Baskets. And this is the medium half size. And it fits these large border punches really nicely. I have a whole bunch of Creative Memories punches. And then I also have uh, some cassette punches that came from, I'm trying to remember what system this is. I think it's Fiskars. This is a Fiskar stamping system that creates borders. And then in this last cubby, I have my Creative Memories border maker cartridges, the border maker system, some Creative Memory punches. And then some more cartridges for, I think this is Fiskar's border maker system. And then this is for the punch board that you can use to create words. And so all of that stored in that cubby. Okay, so before I end the video, I just want to take you back into the closet and just share a couple of things from the closet. So I have the rest of my punches stored in the closet in this DVD bookcase. So I have all these punches here. And then I did mention earlier in the video that I'm replacing my scrap rack with a bin system. And so I'm keeping all of the scrap rack pages and the spinders, but I'm eliminating the metal base. So I am creating flip bins with my scrap rack pages. And I picked up three of these large clear bins from Amazon. They're Acra bins. That's the brand name. And so my plan is to create flip storage where I can flip through my uh, scrap rack pages this way. And I'm hoping this is going to work out. I'm not 100% sure if it will or not. Uh, but I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a way to put the uh, scrap rack pages here so that I could flip through them this way. And so I replaced my uh, bases that I had, my scrap rack bases, with these three bins. I also did move my flip bin storage for my paper into the closet. So here I have all of my paper stored in different categories, like background, base pages, 
textures, text words, rainbow, borders, cut aparts. And then I also have some paper stored by color. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. You want to say anything, Miss Bella? You want to tell the YouTube people hello? <laughs> okay, what else you got to say? Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, you want to tell them goodbye? Because the video tour is over. <laughs> it's all over. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my craft room and getting to take a look around at my space. And uh, hopefully y'all come back and join me again. If you're not already a subscriber and you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you join my community. But y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome day. And we hope to see you next time. Bye now.